Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bill. We're obviously in the middle of a snowstorm here in the Midwest. It's the middle of February in 2021. Uh, and I was just thinking, how many times in years past have I sat inside the house, waiting on a storm to come or in the middle of a storm, praying that the electricity wouldn't go out? Well, we don't do that anymore, and you don't have to either. So stay tuned, and I'll tell you all about our setup and how we have peace of mind in the middle of a storm. Middle of February, 2021. We got the Snowmageddon storm. We're expecting anywhere between 11 and 13 inches here in central Indiana and it's coming down hard and fast. Yep, the snow is really coming down. It's supposed to snow till about midnight tonight. Fortunately, the power has not gone off, but it actually could at any moment. You can see that we're in a very rem uh, remote and rural area here in central Indiana. We lose the power quite frequently in the spring during the spring uh, thunderstorms, uh, and we also lose it quite a bit in the winter time. So that's why we've invested in this system. Uh, this is a, an easy three-step system. You need a generator, you need a 50 amp power cord that actually comes with the Generlink, and you need the Generlink. And in about five minutes, five to ten minutes, you can have power restored to your home safely, securely, and properly. So here's our automatic transfer switch. It is a Generlink and it's made by Global Power Products in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Uh, I ordered this direct from them a couple of years ago. Now, I did have to have it, the installation done by the power company, because as you can see, this actually sits behind the meter. So the power company had to come out, cut off the power, pull the meter, install the Generlink, and then reinstall the meter. Now, this was a service that they provided for free uh, because they work with Generlink now this is our XP12000EH dual fuel generator from Duramax Power Systems. I bought this generator off of eBay about three or four years ago during a Black Friday sale. Uh, I paid $799 for the generator and that included shipping. Now they shipped it on an LTL carrier, so I had to meet him at, actually at a local truck stop we had to unload it from his trailer onto the back of my truck because he couldn't make it down our road. Now, even though this generator is a dual fuel generator, it'll either run on gasoline or propane. I generally run it on gasoline. We have some propane tanks on standby just in case, but I keep a good supply of gasoline on hand. Anytime you're going to keep a generator on standby, ready to use at a moment's notice, you should keep a good supply of gas. I usually keep the gas tank around a quarter of a tank uh, and I always treat the fuel with stable. That way there's not an issue uh, with the fuel system on the generator being gummed up. Uh, inside this tub I keep my 50 amp power cord. I keep my generator manuals uh, and all the information that came with the generator. And underneath there I also keep the, uh, the propane uh, conversion kit but I like the gasoline because it's readily available. In just a moment, I will go through the steps of how to connect the generator to the Generlink, how to start up the generator safely, uh, and how to provide power to your house in an emergency situation. As I mentioned before, the Generlink mounts behind the meter on the outside of the home. There's nothing that needs to be done to your breaker panel. Many transfer switches are not automatic, they're manual. You'll have to have somebody come in, mount a transfer switch next to your uh, power box, your breaker box. Then you'll have to drag the cord from the generator inside, plug it into that, or sometimes there's an exterior uh, mount as well. But all of those transfer switches that I've seen, and I did a lot of research uh, on this system before I made the investment, but all of those systems actually have to be connected inside of your breaker box. Now, as you can see here, this is, the, this is the breaker box, undisturbed. There's been nothing done to this breaker box uh, for the Generlink. The Generlink just simply mounts behind your meter on the outside of the house. The first step to connecting to your system, and you always wanna do this while the generator is off, is you wanna connect 
your 50 amp power cord to your Generlink. So you'll remove the rubber plug protector over that. And my fingers are cold. There we go. So remove the cover. Okay, you'll notice that the Generlink can only be hooked up one way. You can see the notches that are in there, so it'll only allow you to hook it up one way. So with the cover removed, you'll put your plug up to the Generlink and twist it until it slips in. Let me do that again. You can see how you turn it, it slips, turn it in, push it up until it clicks. Now that collar has locked your 50 amp cord to the Generlink. The next step is to plug the male end of your 50 amp cord into the generator. Now you can see that there's, a, there's actually a lot of outlets on this generator, but you can see the orientation of these uh, prongs that come out of this plug. You can also see that this generator is marked for your 50 amp plug. So we'll go ahead and plug the 50 amp cable into the generator once again doing all of this while the generator is off. Aramax actually comes with a quick start guide, but to start the generator, the first thing that you would do is you would turn on the fuel, choke the generator, turn the key to the on position, and start the generator. Once you have your generator running, you can turn off your idle control or leave it on because once it, once the generator senses a load, it'll idle itself up and it'll start providing power. You can turn on the circuit breaker for the generator. That will allow the power to start flowing through the line over to the, the meter and the Generlink and then you'll have power inside the house. One last thing I just want to mention. We want to be safe when we do this. That's why we invested in the Generlink. We want to keep our family safe. We don't want to be trying to power the house with a bunch of extension cords running all over the place. We certainly don't want to be sending power back up to the electric company and, you know, knock one of the linemen off the line. Uh, so we want this to be safe. That's why we made the investment. The last thing I'll mention is you never, ever want to run a generator inside your house, not even in the garage. You want the generator to be outside. You want the exhaust to be blowing away from the house preferably with the wind, you know, let the wind carry it away because carbon monoxide is a serious issue and we don't want to get anybody hurt. So stay safe, stay warm, and keep the power on. Thanks for watching.